What's up guys, FSC Speed Shop. Well, today we're gonna try to put all this together. This being the frame of a 1968 Chevelle, owned by the one and only Gene and Sarah Lasker of Tampa, Florida. This here is a 502 cubic inch Chevy big block with a big roots blower sitting on top of it. This here is a GM 400 transmission that Gene sent down, had built up there for performance purposes and shipped it down here. So now we're gonna go put all this together. Now right in front here is a transmission cross member. And that's not gonna work with this frame the way it's set up. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and modify that transmission mount so it'll work with this frame. Actually, believe it or not, that is the factory transmission mount that came with this frame prior to our modification. If you wanna see the modifications we did to this frame, go ahead and check out a series of videos we did where we stiffened it and strengthened it and made it much more rigid than it was because these Chevelles are actually very weak in the middle and for this kind of power we certainly don't want to have any major problems. So with that let's go ahead and get started. Hey Matt. Yeah? Come here for a minute. That won't fit. Uh uh. You can weld right? Yeah. Good. Thank you. The way this works is it sits like this, but it sits here inside the C channel. Remember, this here didn't used to be here. This I boxed in. So it would sit on a ledge that's on the inside portion of this frame. The way I've designed this frame mount here is so when this sits lower, the cross member rides on these pads. Now, in case Gene or anybody, future owner of this car, probably just Gene, I don't see him selling it, wants to change transmissions or engines, it can be relocated forward or back. That's why I made these pads as long as I did. Because if you look underneath, you'll see a bunch of holes where GM put a myriad of holes for a different amount of transmissions. I think in this era of car, you had your 400, you had your 350, you also had a power glide, the two speed. So there were options available, everything from an inline six cylinder all the way to in 68. Um, I don't know if Yanko was pushing them out yet, but COPO certainly was, and you could uh, get a, everything from an inline six to a 427. Uh, 396 was a common super sport, well, if super sports were common, that was. Either way, it's made for a lot of options, so that's why I made it so more options could be added if need be. Also, because of the size of an engine, we're also going with solid front engine mounts. So now all we have to do is simply measure the distance of what from the original mount would be to where this lines up up top. Now what I've done is I'm just going to copy off of what GM already did. I'm not going to design my own thing. So it's real simple. I measured from where it was, where that cross member mounted on the inside of the frame to the side. And in the center, where it actually has a raised hump for it to ride on, sits 12 and a quarter on both sides. So what I've done over here is I've simulated the frame but I added two inches. The only reason I added two inches is these won't compress down to 12 and a quarter. So now we're set up to 14 and a quarter of the frame. So whatever this measurement is from the transmission mount down to the floor, you simply subtract the two inches I added. This way I know how high to build it when I put it in the frame. So Matt will hold it. It's exactly 13 and a half sitting flat. So 13 and a half, take two away, you're at 11 and a half. Now all I have to do is measure the inside width so I know where to cut that. 29 and a half. The frame is 57 and a quarter wide at that point as well. So we'll do a little math, figure out where halfway is, and decide where to cut. Now what I've done is I've marked where I'm going to cut with tape and the angle of which I need to cut it. 
this here is to keep it so we keep it reasonably square and then we simply chop the ends off of the cross member where we're welding the new pieces of steel Now we're going to start constructing the ends. These are about three inches across. So what we'll do is we'll take our angle iron and we'll cut two pieces three inches across. Actually we'll make them a little bit bigger. We'll make them three and a quarter. We measure the distance back to where our centers are. Now we got to worry about the height. They happen to hit right on it, 11 and a half. What are the odds of that? Give me them angle. Oh, hang on, one's here. Give me uh, C clamps. Plug the welder in. Okay, I think you're starting to see my little design here. Let's double check. Eleven and a half. Perfect. So we're centered to the car and we got the right height. So now, if Matt can do this without bumping into it, I'll let him give me some decent tack welds and then we'll put it up on a table and I'll have him finish weld. What setting? Um. I think J8.
Excellent. I do is I weld these gussets in. Gives her a little more strength. How, and that, uh, I could weld really good there. Yeah. No, seriously, come look. Yeah. Duplicate on the inside now. I just stand and walk around. You'll be positioning in that. That's yeah. how you melt tools, like I melted oh. the sunglasses. Or the safety glasses. I just, I, I did all, all my welding in one spot, didn't move it. I got that. I just like it because then I can get some uh, stability. Understood. Like uh, I understand, but you know, this difference would take a 30 minutes or five. The shadow makes it hard to work. I, it's hard for me to see the seam. Alright, give up on our pneumatic. Get the get the extension cord. 